Hey guys, welcome to today's video. In this video, I want to talk about the concept of niching down on your business strategy on Amazon FBA. Now, um, when you start FBA, um, generally everyone talks about doing one of four different overall strategies, and that is wholesale, retail arbitrage, or RA, online arbitrage, which is online arbitrage, so OA, online arbitrage, or PL, which is private label. Um, and while I do think it's good, obviously, choose one of these or maybe choose one or two of these, within all of these, you can then obviously kind of niche down more and more into different um, categories and things like that. So that's what we're going to talk about today, basically, um, and why it's kind of important to do this. Um, so what I'm going to be talking mainly about today is niching down inside of online arbitrage because that's where my experience is. I don't really have any experience in wholesale. Um, I've got a tiny bit of RA and experience and very little private label experience. So obviously I'm just going to talk about what I know and that is online arbitrage. Now, um, it's always good, I think, I mean, when you first start out with Amazon, you obviously pick one of these categories and you obviously don't have to, you're not set in stone. You might start with uh, retail arbitrage. That's a good one that most beginners start on and then they move on to online arbitrage. But you can always change, you know, there's no strategy once you've started, you have to stick with it. Um, but obviously once you get into and you decide, okay, like OA is the one for me, you, within that category, there are many different um, ways to do business, basically, many different niches. Um, so before I start, I just want to plug my website, amazseller.com. So if you purchase a lot of items online and do online arbitrage, then you should know that keeping track of all your purchases can be a bit of a nightmare. Um, but if you use amazseller.com and sign up today, you can sign up for free and you can use that to track all your purchases. You can track the purchase progress from ordered to dispatched to delivered track if there's any problems and um, yeah you can also track things like invoices as well what's your invoice status etc so you can track all that stuff in amazella.com right so inside of online arbitrage um, when you first start out you kind of tend to do everything I find you don't really have a category in mind you kind of sell any, anything and everything you don't have a price range in mind. You don't have any kind of strategy generally in mind. This is what I've experienced. And this is what I did. I kind of just did everything. I think most people do. But I think it's actually good inside of, inside of online arbitrage. Once you realize how many deals are out there. And um, I think it's good to know that when you first start out, you, you have this scarcity mindset. That you think that deals and leads are really scarce. But actually, once you've done this for a little while, you realize actually it's the opposite. Um, there's an, you, need, you soon get this like abundance mindset. And you realize there is an abundance of deals out there. Um, so um, once you get rid of this sort of scarcity mindset, which is, you know, it's almost like scared money. Um, you know, it's, you, know it's, you, you, you think there's nothing, you know, you know, there's very few leads out there. Um you can basically then start thinking about niching down. Now, the first thing we can talk about is like, what category are you gonna sell into? Um, now, most people start off with health and beauty, because that's the easiest one. Toys, you know, video games, that kind of thing. Um, another big one as well as electronics as well. Um, and then, you know, they're, they're probably the, the main three ones that begin to start with. But there are a load of other categories on Amazon. That is not the only thing that's sold on Amazon, but everyone seems to gravitate towards these sort of three um, <laughs> categories and they only sort of stay there or they do, you know, all of them. Um, but there are so many other categories like outdoor, pets, um, you know, even just, just, I think, just look around your home and think about you could buy almost anything in your uh, office or your room you're in now and think, okay, there's a shelving, I'm not quite I can't do it. There's a shelving unit right there. Right, cool. There's some posters on the wall. Oh, I'm bad at pointing. Um, there's a printer. Okay, it's electronics down there. But like, God, I can't point anywhere. <laughs> this is quite difficult. Um, so you use, look, light fittings, light switches, door handles. Door, probably not doors, but you know, you get the point. A microphone in front of me, lighting. There's all of these things. Um all these different categories. And if you just wander around your home and think about what these different categories are, or just look on Amazon, you can realize that there's so many other categories than what most people sell. So that is your first kind of 
way of niching down rather than doing everything. And while I'm not saying you can't buy a good opportunity here and there when it comes to a good category, but tend to try and niche down in terms of the category. It's a good one, picking one or two good categories to start with. That's a good start. And then um, another thing inside of that is, are you someone who's going to buy a lot of SKUs, a lot of different items in that category? Maybe say you're going to have 100, 200, 300 different items and only buy sort of 10 or 20 of each. Or you're going to be someone who really goes for those high selling items um, with a real high sales per month. And you're just going to try and stick to 10, 20, 30 SKUs, maybe 50 at most, but go really deep into them. Um, is that a strategy you want to do? Um, the other thing you can look at as well is like, what price range do you want to go for? Are you going to be aiming for the, what used to be like small and light on Amazon? I don't know why I air quoted, but um, you know, people used to aim for small and light and that used to be anything under 10 pounds. used to get a discount with Amazon when it came to shipping and all that kind of stuff. So that is something people specialized in was small and light, but it could be that you go for anything over 100 pounds, a hundred dollars. You go for those expensive items that no one wants to touch. Or maybe you go for the bulky items. Or maybe you go for the hazmat items. So, um, yeah, there's all these different strategies inside of all, all the strategies that you can do. And you can essentially niche down. You can pick a different category. That's your first main niche. Your second niche might be, oh, I only go for expensive and bulky items. It might be the next one. Um, and, you know, and then maybe has, I mean, you don't want to go too deep, but... You know, and it also depends on the category, but you can see what I'm getting at here. You've got all these different, um, all these different niches and targets you can do. So yeah, so one obviously is that, that you can go, you can go broad, but not too deep. So you, you know, two, three hundred different items, and only stock ten or twenty of items, or you can niche down and go into like just fifty items or less, and you try and buy deep into those. So 100, 200, 300 units for these fast selling ones. You might want to be going for these really expensive ones, so two, three hundred pounds, you know, or dollars. Because just think about this: beginners will not want to buy those items. They'll just see risk, and there is a risk, obviously, to it. You need the capital. You need to, you know, people. You know, there is a risk element to it, but it tends to be less competition on the bigger and more expensive items. Well, like I say, you could go for the big and bulky ones, the ones that are a pain. I've, you know, I don't tend to shy away from anything, but if I do, it will be the big and bulky items. Um, unless I've got a prep center. Um, and then finally, like hazmat as well. That's another one. People avoid hazmat because you can't use the Amazon shipping, like the UPS uh, partner carrier. You have to arrange it all yourself. It costs the pot, you know, I sent some boxes today that so are hazmat. And rather than costing three or four pounds per box, you know, it's costing me 16 or 17 pounds um, because it's hazmat. And I had to do the, the, uh, the shipping myself. So yeah, hopefully you can think about, and there's probably a bunch of different ways that you can do business that I've not even thought of. And like I say, this is a more advanced technique. I think when you first start, you kind of, you know, you can do a bit of wholesale, a bit of RA, a bit of OA, a bit of private label maybe, mix it up a bit. Then you kind of figure out what you like. Are you an indoor person? You like to sit in front of the computer, then probably more towards OA and wholesale maybe in private label but if you like to be out and about more ra and then once you, you learn you then sort of i think the general strategy is just to go for very broad you know lots of SKUs and don't go too deep and that's kind of where i am right now to be honest but then you start to think and this is where i am now thinking more about hey can i change my strategy now and this kind of goes back to my previous video as well of um building what is called, I say it's, it's, it's manufacturing margins is the term that I use. It's building a moat around your products. And this is all like trying to make your products profitable, but also a moat means um, essentially making it more difficult for people to copy what you're buying. But at the same time though, and I, I tell this to my VAs as well, complexity is like your friend. The more complex a deal is, the better it is. So like a level zero deal, and maybe I'll do a whole nother video on complexity, but just in my mind, like a level zero, it's a very brief explanation. A level zero deal in terms of complexity is like, you just go to the website, it's 9.99, and you can sell it for 19.99 on Amazon, and that's it, there's nothing else. You just buy it and sell it, and that's it. It's the price list on the website. Level like one might be, oh, you can use a coupon, you know, to go that. Um, and that's like a level one complexity. So it's still not much more complex, but it makes it, if someone doesn't know about that coupon, then they don't know that they can buy that for, you know, that 
uh, item cheap enough to then sell it on Amazon for a profit. Then you've got things like level two, where it's maybe taking a shampoo and a conditioner and bundling them together. So you've added these two complex items that someone can't just Google, you know, this item because it doesn't exist in the wild. That you can't just go and buy the shampoo conditioner pair from, let's say, boots.com. You have to buy them separately, package them together, and then sell them on Amazon. So that's another uh, level of complexity that we call like level two. And it could be that you're, uh, yeah, bundling two different items together to create the, what's called like almost a variety pack. It could be you're just taking two shampoos, the same ones, putting them together, and that's more of a bundle. Um, it could be that you're buying a 10 pack of shampoos and then you're splitting them up into one packs. So there's multiple ways to do this, basically. And every level of complexity at, is, is good for you because it makes the barrier to entry for someone else coming in, you know, much harder. And this is where this kind of niching down comes down as well. So it comes into play. So, you know, it's picking your strategy, but then also adding the... And I'll, I'll do a whole other video. I've gone sidetracked on the whole uh, complexity thing, but um, I'm not sure if I've coined that term myself, but this idea of complexity, to adding complexity to a deal. Um, and I'll do a whole other video on that because it's a, I, kind of, I, I like the concept behind it and I think it's important and it's something I try and teach my VAs as well. Um, that complexity is key. And the more complex a deal is, the happier I am because the less people that will be selling it. Anyway, guys, hope you found that interesting and enjoyable. And if you've got any thoughts, please leave them down below. Um, hopefully this is making your brain tick over a little bit thinking, oh, okay, here's how I can go to the next level on my Amazon FBA business. Um, and yeah, if you enjoyed it, leave a comment down and if you could please subscribe as well, I'd really appreciate it and like the video and comment and all that kind of stuff. I'd really appreciate it guys I'm trying to build the channel up and you know, I'm doing this just to impart my knowledge really, but it's nice to get the feedback as well, you know, just to see that people are enjoying the video. So, um, yeah. And again, if you want to track all your purchases, check out amaseller.com and I'll see you in the next video.